The Bristol Bowfighter made something of a name for itself during the Second World War. Tough, dependable and hard-hitting, the Bow served as an attack aircraft, a torpedo bomber and as one of the first truly capable night fighters that was to be operated by the Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Force. Indeed, the aircraft served in almost every theatre of the war and was built to the handsome number of just under 6,000. But this success disguises that the diverse Bowfighter family had a few black sheep. And in fact, one of these was cursed with not just one major flaw, but two. And these flaws were based on ideas that kind of made sense from a logical perspective, but failed miserably in application. I give you the Bowfighter NF Mark V. So... What made it so bad in comparison to the baseline Bowfighter? Well, essentially, engines, armament and performance. Pretty much all of the most critical components for a successful combat aircraft. But the reasoning for the changes made to this machine do actually make some sense. For starters, the majority of the Bowfighters built had Bristol Hercules radial engines. These tough power plants proved a good match to the rugged Bowfighter, but the Hercules had proved difficult to get into production, and manufacture was slow to take off. The engine was also to be the primary power plant for the new Short Sterling Heavy Bomber that entered service with the RAF in 1940, and for the slightly later Handley Page Halifax, and these aircraft were considered a priority. So, what with the issues in Hercules production, and a huge demand for this new engine, it was thought prudent to fit another engine onto the Bowfighter in 1941, as a backup against shortages or problems with the Hercules. And the engine chosen was the Rolls-Royce Merlin, the same as fitted to the Supermarine Spitfire, the Hawker Hurricane, the de Havilland Mosquito, etc etc, the list goes on and on. By this point the Merlin was in full production, was well tested, and undergoing a continuous development that would see it remain the primary British aero engine essentially throughout the entire war. Now, if you read through the comments on several of my previous videos, you'll often see the suggestion that such and such an aircraft would have been better had it been fitted with the Merlin. It's become almost an article of faith. But in the case of the Bowfighter, that didn't actually work out. The Mark II F Nightfighter, was fitted with the Rolls-Royce Merlin 20, which provided less power than the Hercules, and so the performance of the aircraft was reduced. One suspects that the lower performance was considered acceptable in a night fighter, so in fact 447 Mark II Fs would actually be built, though they were apparently not very popular with their crews and had a nasty tendency to swing on takeoff. But the Mark II Fs were available, and they did the job as night fighters, though they certainly weren't ideal. In fact, the principal problem with the type wasn't just the mediocre performance and sometimes erratic handling, it was the limitations with the air intercept radars they were fitted with. The AI Mark IV radar fitted to the Bowfighters could get them to within about 3 miles, around 5 kilometers, of a German bomber flying at 15,000 feet. But the final intercept had to be done by the pilot by eye, because signal would be lost in returns from ground clutter at that point. The lower the altitude, the worse this got. And on a dark night, where you are flying effectively blind, but knowing you have an enemy bomber somewhere out there in front of you, that you really only have a vague idea of the location of, well, you are talking about a literally hit or miss situation. It was, in short, rather tricky, dangerous, and with variable results. So, how to improve the situation? Fit a powered turret, such as that used on the Bolton Paul Defiant turret fighter. This would remove the pressure on the pilot by allowing him to concentrate on flying the plane and provide another set of eyes that could help spot the target and then, more importantly, fully concentrate on engaging it. And there were some grounds for thinking that this would work. The Defiant, a complete failure as a day fighter in service, had been relegated to duties as a night fighter in 1940. And, 
while it's fair to say it wasn't exactly very good at the role, it was actually more successful than most of the other types in use for night interceptions by the RAF at the time. As an aside, if you want to know the reasoning behind the British flirtation with turret fighters like the Defiant, I explained that in my video on the Blackburn Rock, which I shall link to at the end. But returning to the point, the logic of applying the same principles of letting a dedicated gunner deal with the target while the pilot flew not only seemed to hold up, but it had also been proven with the Defiant. Kind of. So orders were issued to convert two Mark II Fs into Mark Vs for testing the concept. These retained the AI Mark IV intercept radars, but had their main armament of four 20mm cannons and six 303 machine guns reduced to just two 20mm cannons for the pilot, and the fitting of a rotating turret carrying four 303 machine guns mounted in a dorsal position behind the cockpit. Crew was therefore increased from two to three, with a gunner now added to the two-man crew of pilot and radar operator. The two Mark Vs were then sent to night fighter squadrons for operational testing, which was conducted between the summer of 1941 and the spring of 1942. The effect was about what you'd expect. Performance, already reduced in the Merlin engine bows, became positively sluggish with the extra drag and weight of the bulky turret, and the Mark V's only ever managed a top speed of 302 miles per hour, 486 kilometers per hour, at altitude. Plus, it must have been wondered at how effective the four rifle caliber machine guns would have been against German aircraft that, by this point in the conflict, were fitted with more armour and getting much tougher. In reality, the night interceptor issues were already on their way to being resolved by the time the Mark Vs flew, with the introduction of much improved radars. First came the AI Mark V system, which entered service in April 1942, and which fitted a display for the pilot that allowed him to track the target himself as his aircraft closed on it. This was followed by the Centrimetric, Mark 8, which was able to use a parabolic dish for directional scanning and which wasn't affected by ground returns, which allowed the night fighters to close straight in on their target on radar signal only. These started being fitted to bow fighters in late 1942, and at this point they really became an effective night killer. Ironically, just in time to start being supplanted and replaced by the night fighter de Havilland Mosquitoes. The two Mark V's converted seem to have vanished. I suspect either converted back to standard Mark II Fs or else to some other role until they were eventually scrapped. A classic example of logical ideas tripping over themselves. <laughs>